Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to have you here on this Saturday morning. I know what that means, it's Saturday morning, so a bunch of you guys are gonna be watching this a little bit later, which is great. Uh, glad that you're getting able to sleep in a little bit. Maybe you got some things going on first thing in the morning. But the point is that sometime today, you took the opportunity to pause and reflect on, on the passage we're gonna talk about here today and be intentional in your relationship with God. Every day we have the opportunity to take a step forward in our relationship with Him. That's that's why uh, this is called the daily race. It's not about running a marathon every day. It's not about uh, running a sprint every day. It's about how fast we can go. It's about being intentional over time. And here we are finishing up our uh, our study on uh, Psalms that parallel with the, the life of David. Uh, the goal is, just big goal for the daily race, is about every three years make it through the whole Bible. Um, and that means we're going to we kind of split up Psalms a bit throughout. And uh, we spent the last two weeks looking at Psalms particularly. Uh, from the time where David is being uh, going, going through trials. We have the Psalms give us a uh, inside look at what is going on, his thoughts, his prayers, his hearts. It's his journal entry to go along with the historical account we find in First and Second Samuel, which is, which is pretty cool. That's pretty unique. Um, one of the things we do find, though, after a while is it gets a little, a little repetitive sometimes, right? Like there's trial, there's circumstances. Saul is chasing him again. There's him crying out, asking for the God's help. Um, so it's, it's easy to kind of glaze through these and think that they're all, all, sim all similar, which I have a tendency to do. I, I, I'm not a big uh, literature, you know, poetry person. So um, I, I struggle with that a little bit. But what the last two weeks have helped me to really dig in and look at these and okay, what are the distinctions? What are the different things going on? What, what's a key phrase that jumps out to me as I read through these, these prayers of David, these songs of David? And today, as we're going to wrap up with Psalm 142, um, it just reminded me uh, just this idea of, of where are we going? You know, how are we going to get back on track? Because uh, I mentioned yesterday and a couple of times that trials, storms in life, difficulties, whatever you want to call them, are disorienting. Uh, they can change our course. We can make poor decisions. Um, we ask God for his help. We ask God to protect us from making poor decisions. But when it's time to, to lift our eyes up, when it's time to move forward, which direction are we going? And uh, this Psalm 142 has, just has a phrase in it, a couple verses in it that really remind me of that. So I'm going to read the psalm here for you. Uh, this takes place, uh, once again, Psalm wrote, or David wrote a couple psalms while he was hiding in the caves from Saul. Uh, and this is one of those as well. It says, I cry out to the Lord. I plead for the Lord's mercy. I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles. When I'm overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn. Wherever I go, my enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one gives me a passing thought. No one will help me. No one cares a bit about what happens to me. Then I pray to you, O Lord. I say you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. Hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison so, you can, so I can thank you. And the godly, the godly will crowd around me, for you are good to me. That passage here where he is just talking about, he's overwhelmed. He doesn't know which way he should go. No one's giving him advice. He's at a low place. Hear my cry, for I'm very low. And at this point, he comes to this, uh, I don't know if it's a, a conclusion. He, he comes to this uh, thought that he says, uh, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. You are all I really want in life. Now, what, what a foundational statement, right? What, what a, a motto really to go through. You, God, are all I really want in life. Now that's, that's a bold statement, right? That's, that's a clarifying statement. Right? You can say, okay, if everything is going bad, everything's going wrong, you are all I really want. Uh, that if everything's taken away from me, as long as I have you, God, which you're not going anywhere, I'm going to be okay. Uh, what a foundational faith-giving statement. Uh, but it's also difficult to say that out loud because there are lots of things that we want in life, right? There are lots of things that we desire and pursue. Uh, relationships. People, family. I mean, I think those are the ones that, you know, to say this statement, I have a hard time saying, 
you are all I really want in life. Because I also want a relationship with my wife and my kids. And, you know, that's very important to me. I would say some of the most important things to me. The only thing coming below this statement, you are all I really want in life, God. It gets to the core of who we are. When we are struggling, when we're looking for our way out, it's God that's going to help us. Even relationships aren't going to save us. Our closest relationships aren't going to save us. Now, God's blessed us. He's put incredible people in our lives. Sometimes they are the answer uh, to helping give us a hand, helping us move forward. But when even those are gone, if for some reason those have fallen apart, God is still enough. Uh, our desire for him, that orientation, that way out of darkness, God will always give us a way out when we're at our lowest to come to that point where we realize, God, you're the only one I want to please in this moment. You're, you're the only one I know that's going to bring me comfort. Now, that's, that's a difficult place to be in. This is somewhere that, that I don't wish to be in. I, I don't want to find myself, not necessarily this low that, that God is all I want, but that everything is stripped away from me. Um, that's a painful process. That's a difficult process. But that's where we find David, in this cave, and realizing that he can still be joyful, he can still be happy, he can still have hope because God is ultimately all that he needs, all that he wants in life. And I, I don't know about you, I've had a, a surprisingly good time walking through all of these Psalms. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, poetry, uh, the style of writing, I have a hard time making it through all, all this. It's just not my, my particular, I, I love narrative, uh, I love, uh, Paul's logic and, and some of his, his letters, uh, I enjoy parsing through that. And poetry has always been a little bit of a difficult for me. Um, but I've really enjoyed the last couple of weeks being able to walk this through you. Paralleling with events in David's life and, and what he's writing out, I hope that maybe you had a new opportunity to look at some of the Psalms as well and take some meaning and application there. Um, the point is that each and every day, we take one step forward in our relationship with God. That he's given us the Psalms um, not just to ignore, uh, not just to uh, uh, read for, for pleasure's sake, but there is truth in here that he wants us to take away. And I don't know about you, but I, I definitely found some truths over the last couple of weeks that God wants me to put into my life in regards to the Psalms. Now, tomorrow we're starting a brand new series. We're going to be jumping into the life of Jesus uh, leading up to Easter. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're doing a, a reading plan that's kind of taking us all through uh, essentially the topics of the Last Supper, uh, a conversation that, that we're entitling, This Changes Everything for our series starting tomorrow at church. And I'd love for you to get there, uh, whether in person, in Goodyear, in Buckeye, or online. Uh, we're doing groups. We even have some online groups. Uh, so I would love to be able to get you uh, involved in this. We're going to be doing the passages on the daily race. It's going to be a, an all, um, all-inclusive series at, at Palm Valley Church. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but right now, let's pause, let's pray, let's get ready for the day, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Lord, we love you, and God, we just echo this psalm. Uh, you are all we want. You are all we want. Uh, we, we love you. Um, we know that you are sufficient for all of our needs, uh, that everything we have comes from you and through you, and God, you are perfect and holy. So God, in, in good times and bad, may we remember um, your love for us, your presence in our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I will see you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.